Hey guys, I'm Ralph and welcome to PatternLab.London. Uh, in this week's episode, so season one, episode four, I'm going to show you how to transform your uh, hand-drawn illustrations or fashion illustrations into beautiful precision, uh, let's say digital fashion illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. Quite an in-depth tutorial, but uh, essentially it should give you all the slight basics when it comes to fashion design or fashion illustration in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see here, um, this is essentially the illustrations that we've created and they're basically digital illustrations built from our existing hand-drawn illustrations using fashion templates. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm also, at the very, very end, a little bonus, I'm going to show you also how to then add a little bit of colour and also a little bit of print into your designs. Essentially, these prints and these designs, uh, or the colours and the print, are not part of this project, Francesca's Robe. Um, but it's just more like a little bit of tutorial to give you an idea, basically. But next week, we're going to be looking at print design using flowers, and we'll start adding the, the prints that we kind of come up with into those illustrations so you have a much better idea of what we're actually creating. Anyway, I'm going to start waffling. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. So as you can see in front of me, I've already kind of created, um, let's say, one of my fashion illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. So I've taken, picked one of them from the very many that I created in Season 1, Episode 3, and obviously digitized it in Adobe Illustrator. And the reason why I'm showing this first of all is because I want to explain a little bit of uh, about layering when it comes to Adobe Illustrator. So over here on the right-hand side, uh, you can see our Layers palette. Now, if you're not familiar with Adobe Illustrator, then you'll probably need to have a look at one of our other tutorials, which is basically, uh, it's basically an introduction to Adobe Illustrator. It's called, um, what is it, uh, Pattern Cutting in Adobe Illustrator or something similar. Anyway, it'll show you how to, there's a link to it in this blog post, but it'll show you how to set up um, your Adobe Illustrator uh, console, obviously with these little um, icons on the left here and obviously the icons on the right here. And these are all the ones that you need to actually uh, do a pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator and also fashion design. just makes it a little bit simpler and cleaner to work with. Anyway, let's go back to what I was saying, which is layering. So here is an existing illustration that I've created. If we just go to Window, if you can't see layers on the right-hand side here, just go to, oops, sorry, let's go to Window, and then Layers. And that will bring up the layer palette. And as you can see here, we've got four different layers. We've got the model, and let me just remove that. We've got the body. Uh, in fact, let's go the opposite way around, just so it's easy to see. So we've got the outline. This is the thick, heavy black lines that kind of give the shape or the kind of three-dimensional feel to the actual garment. We have the details, which are the trims, the pockets, the buttons, the fastenings. We have the body as well. Now the body is important. Uh, this is essentially the color. So if we just simply click on this, this is how we would actually color our garment. So let's just change that to be, let's say, I don't know, like a pink. It's a pretty horrific pink, but still. Um, so that's basically the body. So when we actually build up our layers, you can see that the color is actually still there. Okay, so this is how we add color to our to our illustration by using the body. So let's just remove that. And then obviously we have the model, and the model is the areas that have actually only show up. So if we actually put our body back in, these are the parts of the model that would actually show when the illustration is complete. And I'm going to show you how to create all four of these layers with your illustration. Okay, so first of all, I've got a few more illustrations here. <coughs> As you can see, let's go to our layers. So let's just remove the outline, details, body, and also we have the model. Okay, so it's a very, it's a very um, methodical way of doing your illustrations, and it works well. Uh, yeah. Same again. There we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've simply taken a scan. I've scanned my um, one of the many illustrations that we created in Season 1, Episode 3. I've scanned it and taken it into Adobe Illustrator, and this is it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build up, um, which is opened up in Adobe Illustrator, I'm just gonna now going to start to create my layers. So first of all, let's go to Window, and then get the Layers palette. It should be here as well. And let's just simply create new layer, which is this little icon here. I'm just going to click click that three times, create three, or sorry, four independent layers. Now you can see we're on layer one at the moment because we have this little arrow icon here. So I'm just going to click on layer one, I'm going to rename it. So I'm just going to double click there, I'm going to go model. Layer two, we're going to say body. Layer three, oops, details. Layer four, outline. And it's going to be in that order. So models at the bottom, then body, then details, then outline. You can also move these around just by simply dragging. You see? <coughs> but let's just have the outline at the top, then details, then body, then model. 
Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're not going to worry about the model layer just now, so I'm just going to simply lock that. And you can lock these as well to prevent you from editing them. So I'm just going to lock the model layer, and I'm going to go to my body layer. So I'm going to click. You have to actually click on the layer to actually work on it. If I was to click the model layer, because it's locked, you'll see that I can't actually do anything to that layer. So let's just go on the body, and see now I can actually do things. Okay, so let's go on the body layer. And what we're going to do is, as I mentioned before, the body layer is essentially the thing that holds the color. It is just the outline of your, uh, let's see, illustration. Hang on, sorry. <coughs> it's the outline of the illustration, which basically means that we can add a fill to it if we so choose. Okay? So let's go to the body and let's start drawing. So what would, what essentially would your illustration, where would your illustration hold color? Well, essentially it would be here to here. And let me just take you through a little bit about this whole pen tool as well. So let's go to the pen tool, just up here. I'm just going to simply click on a point, click on another point, and then if you click and hold and drag, you can create curved lines. So essentially point to point, straight line, and then point, point, click, and then drag to create a nice curved line. Let's go down to this point here down to this point, to this point. And at the moment we have a white fill with no line color. So I'm simply just going to pick a line color, which is black, and we do that simply just by double clicking on this. This is the line, and this is the fill. Let's go to black, click OK, and then I'm just going to click on the fill, and then remove. So we now we just have a black outline and no fill. Okay, so next, let's go down. So I'm just going around the entire outline of my garment, essentially, okay, where it's going to actually hold color. So let's go to here as well. Oops. And also if you click on that point, so for example, you see how we, if I click here, it's still a curved line. Well, essentially if I click on that point, it'll turn it back to a straight point, which is really helpful for us. So I'm just going to keep tracing this outline. I'm going to start working quickly because I want to speed this tutorial up a little bit. There we go. Just click creating these lovely curved lines, click, curve, click to get a straight point, and then curve, and let's click to get a, a point, let's go up to the thigh there, let's go down to the base here, oh, and also some interesting tips as well, also some helpful navigation items, if you hold down the space key on your keyboard you'll see you get a little hand, and if you click and drag it allows you to move around the page effortlessly without actually having to use these side scrolls which can be really tricky. Also if you hold the command, or sorry control on a PC, command on a Mac, command plus zooms in and minus zooms out. Okay, So you can zoom in just by holding down command minus and plus. So let's zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to keep drawing this body. Click. Click. Okay, let's take it up a little bit. Let's follow the shape of this. Lovely. And this will take a little bit of practice, these curves. It's not amazingly easy, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. And once you do, essentially, it's probably one of the hardest things in Illustrator to get the hang of. So once you've nailed it, you've nailed it. Let me go back to the pen tool. Click on that point, And let's just a line, click on that point, let's create a nice smooth curve there, let's create a nice smooth curve as well. The more realistic you can make your garment look, obviously the better your illustration is going to be. There we go, and by what I mean by that is simply adding in these lovely little swirls, not swirls, sorry, these lovely curves. So instead of having like straight edges, you see how here this is very straight, whereas here we almost like follow the shape of the body, which is lovely. So I'm going to do the same to the opposite side here. So if you want to curve this now, you've already drawn this line, go to your uh, anchor point tool, which is here, and if it's not present, you can always click on the three buttons, and then in here you'll find anchor point tool, and you can simply click to add it, or you can click and drag. Okay, and then what we do is the add anchor point tool, we just simply go to one end of the point, click and drag, so let's do it again, click on that, click on that point and drag, hold, there we go. Also, if you can get your small section tool, you can get this little point here, and you can nudge it with your arrows on your keyboard. Okay, so you can nudge those around as well, but only when you select the actual point. So you get your small selection tool, which is the white one, not the black one. Get your small selection point and just click on that end point there, or this one, and then you can just nudge it with your arrow keys to move it around. 
Okay, so let's finish this off. <coughs> let's go to the pen tool. And you see that allows me to join or add to that line where you get that. Instead of the star, you have the little add or the little line. Click on that. We're going to go down to our waistline. Click, click up to here. And don't worry if it changes the uh, curvature of that line. We can always go back into our anchor point tool and just change that back to a nice sloping curve. I'm going to create a nice curve here as well just to make it pretty. Okay, so <coughs> let's have a look. That is essentially the body of our garment. That is what is going to contain the color. So let's just, there we go, a disgusting purpley mauve color or lilac. So that is what is going to hold our color. So we can add our details and our outline and all the other elements that go into this dress on top of that layer. Okay, so this is the most fundamental but important layer. And also, let's just change that line width. So I'm just going to get my big section tool, click on our little body here, go to the line or so stroke tool. You can go window and then stroke to find it. And let's just pull that down to about 0.5. We don't want it to be too bold. It's just present, if that makes sense. Okay, so next what we're going to do is let's go to our layers. And we're going to basically lock that off because that one's complete. Let's go to our details next. Okay, so I'm just going to lock that. I'm going to go to details. And let's just zoom in. And now the details are essentially this band here, this band, the buttons, possibly the pockets, and any other little bits and pieces that should kind of like lie on top. So for example, there's a nice little crease here because we have some, well, we have a lot of volume in the bottom of the dress. So these are details that we're going to add on top. <coughs> so we're not working on the body or model layer. We're now working on top of this. So essentially all the details will sit on top of these layers in order. So the model's at the bottom, then the body, then the details, and then finally the outline. This is important. Okay, so I'm going to draw my details. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply trace over my existing line here. There we go. Let's make this a little bit bolder so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's make it one point. Well, let's make it 1.5. 1.5. Let's click. I'm just going to trace, follow the lines out here. There we go. And try and trace that as well. Okay, fab, let's do the other side. And there we go. Take that across. Up. Lovely. I'm trying to make those lines parallel, okay? Because it's almost like a band. That would be like 5cm and that would be 5cm at the bottom as well. Okay, <coughs> let's can carry on. Let's do this one here. Okay, and you see how these are a little bit kind of, it's a little bit of a mess here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply pull that one up. Pull this one up as well to meet that waistline. Same with this one. We can just move that out of the way, pull it up. And this is using the small selection tool. Not the big selection tool, but the small selection tool. Just going to click on that point and drag it to where I want it to be. Same with this one. Click and drag to where I want it to be. The body's a little bit messed up here as well, so let's just go to... Sorry, excuse me. Uh, let's just go to our layers here. <coughs> let's unlock the body. And it's a small selection tool. Click and move that up. Just keep things nice and neat as you go. And here as well, maybe we want to change this around a little bit, make it a little bit neater. Yeah, there we go. Let's just change it. So you can always, you know, um <coughs> mess around, add, change things as you go along. Okay, so let's lock the body layer, go back to our details layer because we want to keep adding more details and let's just simply zoom in, let's create some buttons. So I'm going to go to my ellipse tool I'm going to hold down, so I'm going to click and drag to create an ellipse but you see we can make it any size so essentially let's just hold down the shift key if you hold down the shift key it locks it to constrain those details or those proportions so it's always going to be the same it's always going to be a proportionate circle. There we go, let's just get the big selection tool click and the big selection tool essentially selects the whole object whereas the small selection tool selects the individual elements of that object okay so two important things to think about and what I'm doing is I'm just going to go edit copy edit paste there we go just drag that in but what you can also do is simply click on that with the big selection tool I'm going to hold down the alt key or option key on my keyboard I'm going to move that up and as you can see just move that up ever so slightly to about there and if I hit control D it simply duplicates, control D, 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 duplicates my existing uh, movement. Okay, so obviously these buttons, uh, let's just remove this top one. It's a little bit unnecessary. Um, 
what we're going to do is we're going to align these buttons so they fit perfectly and they're evenly distributed. So first of all, I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag that up to where it kind of should be. I'm then going to get big selection tool. I'm going to keep that selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard. I'm going to click and drag over the rest of those circle elements. And note I haven't got anything else included in my selection. I'm then going to go up here to my align or distribute. And I'm going to vertically distribute those uh, to the center. And there you go, you see how they're all now evenly spread. And let's also keep them in a straight line. Perfect, looking nice. Okay, also this one might be a little bit too low, so maybe we can move this button up. Let's go to the big selection tool, click on this. Let's just nudge it up a little bit, maybe that much. Click and drag over all of these. Hold down the shift key and just click on these as well to add them to your selection. And then let's just vertical distribute. Uh, that didn't really do much, but anyway, you get the point. Okay, so next let's work on our pockets. Okay, so pockets are going to be like this. Lovely. We can also move this point out a little bit if we want to keep that line a little bit more uh, vertical. Same with this one. Click. And you see how with this pocket I have you see I've got a little nick there, that kind of almost makes it feel a bit more three-dimensional. If I was just to draw it on the side of the dress, then it wouldn't really feel that three-dimensional, like it's actually something... It would just feel like something that's kind of been stapled onto the dress. Same with this side as well. Okay, so we've done our pockets. Let's have a look. What else do we need to do? Okay, let's also draw in these lines. So, small selection... To, sorry, pen tool. And let's just click and drag and create a nice swooping curve. Same with this one here. That might be an amazing uh, curve on the opposite side there. That's all right. Ooh, same with that one. Not great, but there we go. It's a, bit, it's a bit better. You can play around with these, obviously. It's up to you. Yeah, that'll... Mm. Okay, I'm not enjoying those at all, but still. Um, you get the point. Let's just do something like that. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so... We're going to also work into these pockets. <coughs> uh, sorry, into the pockets and also these, these little waistband, uh, these little trims here, okay? Because we want all these lovely vertical lines. Now, instead of me getting the line tool and just drawing a whole bunch of lines and, you know, duplicating them, which, you know, is fine, but will be a little bit time consuming and also a little bit unwieldy, we're going to create a brush, which is really cool, okay? It's very, very helpful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a line, go to my line tool, I'm going to make sure I have my black line art there, I'm going to click and drag and just create a line. Now, let's just do that again. So I'm going to click and drag, hold down the shift key, will lock it to the horizontal axis, it'll also lock it to the vertical, sorry, the uh, diagonal and also vertical. Okay, so hold down the shift key to make sure it's straight, just release, and then here I'm just going to use that technique we had before, so I'm going to get my big selection tool, which is the black one, click and hold, hold down the optional alt key on my keyboard, I'm just going to move that down ever so much, and you see how you've got the black and the white arrow there? Well, essentially, that is duplicating. I'm just going to leave that, release it, and then hit Control D, D, or Command D, 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 and what it does is it duplicates that existing move. Okay, so now we have a whole row of beautiful lines that are all parallel to one another, and they're all evenly spaced, okay? Now, this is a little bit too thick for me. Maybe I want to make these a little bit thinner. So let's go to my stroke, and let's go 0.3. There you go, it's a little bit lighter. Now what we're going to do is make a brush out of this, so we can apply it anywhere to curved lines, straight lines, whatever. So I've got my big selection tool, I'm going to click and drag over this whole bunch here. I'm going to go to my brushes. If you can't find it there, then go to Window, and then Brushes. <coughs> and you see how you've got this big blank space here of grey space? I'm just going to simply click and drag that into that box, and that's going to say, right, new brush. I'm going to go Art Brush, OK. And we're going to go left to right. No, do not use these two, because it will go up and down. You want to go left or right, it's absolutely fine. Click OK. And now you can see we have a brush in our palette. I'm just going to get rid of that. So now what happens is, let's say we create a circle. If I apply, and this is a line, so it's a circular line. If I apply that brush, it will apply the brush to that circle. If I do this, for example, there you go, it will apply the brush to that line curvature, which is fantastic, especially when it comes to trim. So it's a much simpler process than having to just draw and then draw and draw and draw and repeat and repeat and repeat. We can just get a line, go to our pen tool, click, click like that, for example. Let's just draw a line. Maybe we should nudge that in a little bit. Just try and get a similar shape to your existing lines here. 
just to make it parallel and just boom whack in your trim lovely and what we can even do is if we don't want to do that again for the opposite side we can just get the big selection tool <coughs> let's right click and then go transform and reflect it and instead of OK we're going to hit copy to make a copy and we can just flip that over to the opposite side there we go and let's just maybe get the small selection tool click on this little bottom point here and nudge it along to get a similar parallel line okay and we can also change this to make it a little bit closer to what that trim actually looks like okay let's get our big section tool click and then move okay so this is great but how do we actually get this to look neat and pretty well what we do is we simply take uh, let's say let's we take our brush and what we do is go to object arrange and then center back okay we can do exactly the same on the opposite side object arrange center back now what we do is, if you remember, let's just get rid of these. If you remember, we had these trims. Okay, these are the things that are going to contain those lines. Okay, um, they're going to almost like a. They're only. Well, let me just show you. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select the outline of that trim that we created earlier. I'm also going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to select the line or the brush. You see how those are both selected now. You see that they're both selected. I'm now going to go right click and go make clipping mask and as you can see my original trim which is now no longer got a line around it has basically contained those lines okay so really simple really easy and what I'm going to do is just to define that trim I'm just going to make sure it's a similar size to this line thickness so let's go stroke I'm just going to take the weight up to about one point is perfect okay just to define that trim exactly the same with the opposite side I'm going to take my um, what do you call it? I'm going to take my trim and I'm going to take my brush as well. Now, the reason why we sent this to back is because for this little clipping mask to work, this little clipping mask to work, you need uh, this, your trim, which is in other words the the object that's going to contain the brush to be on top of the brush. Okay, it's very important. So, once again, get your brush, go object, arrange, center back. Then we're going to click on our trim. Then we're going to hold down the shift key to queue up those selections and click on the brush itself. So we have now both of these selected. Then we're going to go right click, make clipping mask, done. And once again, let's get my small selection tool, click on that little outline, that trim, so we're just selecting the trim, and then we're just going to up the stroke on that. Let's make it actually 0.75. One's a little bit too strong. There we go, lovely. I'm going to do exactly the same for all the rest of my trims here. So this is a nice straight line, so it should be pretty simple. So I'm just going to draw a line, go to my brush, click, object, oops, and I'm going to get this, I'm going to go object, arrange, center back, I'm going to find my trim, I'm going to also hold down the shift key, queue up those selections, um, find the brush, and then go right click, uh, make clipping mask, done. Then let's just create the, um, what do you call it, let's add the 0.75 to the trim. Let's do the pockets as well. In fact, you know what? I think I'd prefer this to be a little bit more curved just to make it feel a bit more three-dimensional. So let's just change that around a little bit. There we go. Same with this one as well. Let's make that a little bit more curved. Same here. A little bit more curved. And also... Okay, so next we're going to add our trim to this one as well. So we'll click, click and drag to make that nice curved line. We're going to add our brush like that. And we can always nudge, get the small section tool, click on that little endpoint and nudge it up and down. And I'm just trying to line up, that looks pretty good, that with the top edge of our band. Okay, I'm going to get my big section tool, I'm going to click on this. I'm just going to nudge this up because if you can see, I only have this trim detailing kind of halfway down my pocket. So I'm just going to nudge it up. I'm then going to get, I'm then going to, sorry, go click on this, uh, this brush, object, arrange, centre back. I'm then going to click on my pocket. I'm also going to hold down the shift key, select my brush, right click, make clipping mask, and we've got it. Once again, small selection tool, click on the outline, and then let's just go for, there you go, sorry, let's go to 0.75. Fab, let's do the same on the opposite side. So I'm going to create, there we go. Lovely. Let's just change that a little bit, let's make it a little bit, there we go, kind of follows it, 
Get my big selection tool, I'm just going to move it up a little bit to match the opposite side. Yeah, a little bit higher. That'll do. Let's just change the curvature of that line a little bit more. There we go, lovely. Okay, so next, we're going to click on this, our big selection tool. Object, Arrange, Center Back. There we go, let's click on um, our trim. Let's hold down the Shift key, click on our brush, and then go right click, make clipping mask. And let's just grab that outline again, make it 0.75, and that, are, those are our pockets, which is great. Okay, this is perfect, we're getting there. Um, there is one thing to mention, as you can see, that um, our buttons um, have got these lines going through them, so we kind of want to give these buttons a fill. So let's just select all these buttons with the big selection tool, Hold down the shift key, you can queue these up as well. And then just let's put a little fill on them and let's make it white. Okay, so it almost feels like they're on top of that waistband. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my details. Now it's time to start looking at the outline to create a really beautiful three-dimensional feel here, because at the moment it's all very, very flat. So let's go to our layers. So if I simply you see how it's looking. This is obviously without the illustration underneath it, but it's looking a little bit flat. We want to add a little bit more depth and personality to this. So let's obviously then lock our layers. Let's go to our outline layer. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to actually, let's unlock the body. I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to select the body. Okay, so I get all of it here. I'm going to select all the elements. Okay, so we have the trims. So I'm going to get my, uh, the body. I'm going to get the trims as well. So the details. There we go. There we go. What else can we get? Okay. Yeah, okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go edit and then copy. Let's go to our outline layer and let's just paste that on. Okay. I'm just gonna move it into position. In fact we're gonna have it to the side here. Now the reason why I've grabbed all these elements is because they kind of go into making up our outline. And I'm just gonna basically pull them all together to create one object, okay, including this pocket and everything. So I've got all of this selected, which is great. I'm then going to go to my Pathfinder tool. And you find that in Window, and then Pathfinder. And here it is. Just simply click Unite. And that didn't work at all. <laughs> okay. The reason why is because we have this brush inside. Okay. And what we're going to do is, in fact, you know what, let's just remove the pockets. We don't really need it. So forget that completely. Okay, it's not important. So what I'm going to do is in my outline, I'm just going to simply click and drag. Big selection tool. I'm going to go to my line width, and I'm just going to pull this up to be about two points. Also, I'm going to place this on the outside. See, align stroke detail to outside. I'm also going to make the corners curved to give it a nice smooth effect. And then we're also going to make the cap rounded cap. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's just drag that back over our dress. All right, illustration. Now, as you can see, it's becoming a little bit more three-dimensional. It feels a little bit real, or more real, if that makes sense. But there are some some things that we're missing here. So, for example, the arms. We've got this, you know, beautiful sort of like kimono, sort of like dropped armhole, and we also have our pocket edges here as well. So, what I do is with my pen tool, and don't forget, we're on our outline layer. So, I'm adding to the outline. I'm going to click, and I'm just going to do click and drag, and I'm using the same line thickness, so two. And let's just, there we go, put that into position. Maybe we need to change that a little bit. There you go, you can move this point around as well. Just nudge it in. Let's see the opposite side. Lovely. Let's move that point down a little bit. So small selection tool to find those, those points and just nudge them around with your keyboard. And then here as well, let's create, because obviously this is an opening, so let's just create that line. You see, understand what I'm doing here? So essentially, this is our outline. We know that that's the edge of our garment. Essentially, this is also the edge of our garment because it's not a seam. It's actually an opening. So that's why we're giving it this really thick black line. And that's the whole point about the outline. There we go. And also, we have this opening here as well. So we're just informing people how this garment's actually put together. Okay, so you can see that essentially this crosses over. You see how that makes more sense now? This crosses over, it comes down to the split here. There we go, let's move that into this area. There we go. Okay, you can even if you want to. Let's put a little line there to insinuate that it is... There we go. That it's almost like a, 
a little plaque and an opening. Okay, right, what next? It seems a bit weird that this is kind of going off into nowhere, so let's also add the actual body or the inside of that pocket. Let's just add, was it two? Yeah. And let's just make sure it's nice and smooth and clean with the rest of our lines. So just small section tool, click and drag and just move that almost like into the center. You might not be able to absolutely perfect, but from a distance it should look pretty good. There we go. See how that makes a bit more sense now. On the opposite side as well. So the outline is a really important layer or process. It kind of brings your garment to life and explains a little bit about how the garment works or operates. Okay, let's have a look down the bottom here. I think we're pretty good to go. What I might do, just for the fun of it, is just put a little bit of a line here just to show that it's more pronounced down the bottom. You don't have to. It's, it's more styling options. It's about you, I guess, as an illustrator. Same with this. Okay, let's have a look. So I think we're pretty much done. All we need to do now is simply add in the model. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at our layers. So that's our outline done. Let's remove the outline. Here we go, we have our details. Remove the details, we have our body, which holds our color. And then we just have the model. But at this point in time, it is our illustration. So let's actually grab our model. Now, if you followed season one, episode three, you will understand why we're using Preta template models, uh, or model, sorry, fashion templates, where to get them, and also you know how to kind of get them into Adobe Illustrator. So I'm not going to go over that now, but I'm simply going to pick up my Preta template model that I used originally. So let's just go into this and get some assets here. Right, is it in there? No, it's in the next one. Sorry, let me just cut this bit out. Okay, here we go. Alright, fashion templates. This one we're not going to use. This is way too high fashion and totally out of proportion. Whereas this is the template we originally used, which is lovely. So what I'm going to do is, in Adobe Illustrator, the Presta template templates actually do open up in Adobe Illustrator. They're already SVG or editable files. You see how we've been creating illustrations with lines? Well, they output them with lines, which is great. So we can just simply get our small selection tool and we're going to click and drag over just this one girl. Go edit, copy, and let's go to our illustration, which is here. I'm just going to go edit and then paste. And you see how she's absolutely tiny? That's fine because obviously we had it, we have, we've scanned in at a higher resolution, which is why she's small and this is larger. But that's fine. With your big selection tool, let's just make sure she's completely selected here. Let's just click on this, uh, This you see how on the edge there, simply you can then transform it, make it larger. Now you can you know, transform it in a very unusual way. So if you hold down the shift key, it'll lock the proportion. So when you scale it up, it'll be the right size. So now I'm just looking at the top of her head here. And let's just move this down to the bottom. Try and get her foot, which is about there, let's say. Let's just move this over and see if I've got it right. So what I'm doing is let's go to Big Section Tool. I'm just going to click and drag. First of all, I'm going to go to Object and then Group. This just means that now if I click on it, I can get the whole item, whereas before, I've got individual items. This could cause all kinds of problems. So let's just select the whole thing, Object, Group it. Let's just move it into position, or try to at least. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then what with my arrow keys, I'm going to nudge it around left, right, try and get the shoulders to match up. Okay, as you can see, she's still a little bit too short. You can see there from the arm to the tip of the hand. So let's just increase that, holding down the shift key. There we go. Make it a little bit larger. Let's just nudge that into position. So we've now got our model, which is looking fab. So now, let's just go to our layers. Okay, so at the moment, we want our outline layer, which is unfortunate. I should have actually gone to our model layer. So let's just click on our girl again. Let's just go edit, cut. Okay, we know that she's the right size. Let's then lock our outline layer, go to our model layer, unlock it, click on the model layer, paste, and then move her back into position. And we can nudge her around a little bit. But she's looking good. And now what we can do is we can completely remove our fashion illustration or our existing template just simply by selecting it, hitting backspace. And now you can see we have this really beautiful illustration with the model behind, and we have all of our details. It's looking lovely. However, at the moment, uh, she is pretty much um, the dress is see-through. So what we're going to do is let's just first of all grab the model. Let's change the color. Let's change it to be black outline. So the line color 
double click, we're going to get black, click OK. And then here we're just going to bring that down from 1.6, which is quite strong, to 0 0.3. There you go, a little bit more refined. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to my other layer, which is the body layer. Let's just unlock it. And here I'm going to select the dress. And I'm just going to give it a fill. I'm going to fill it with white because I don't want to put any color into my illustration just yet. And now, ba -ba -ba, as you can see, because the body, which is essentially the body of our dress, we've now colored it white, we've blocked out the model, which means we don't have to do too much work with the model. Okay, it's still there. So now what I'm going to do with the model, because she looks very, let's say, wireframey, I'm going to remove some elements. So let's go to our layers, lock the body, unlock model, click on the model, get your small selection tool, and now let's just start to remove some lines. So simply click on it with the small selection tool and then hit backspace a few times, not just once, because you'll leave points. Hit it twice, okay? So backspace, one, two, backspace, one, two, backspace, one, two. Same here as well. We don't need these lines. Same with this one. I'm going to keep these because I want to essentially show where the bust actually is, but I will change it up a little bit. So there's not a huge amount of work to do with this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to select this bust location. Go to my cut tool, and once again, if you can't find it, go into your toolbar, scroll down to find the scissors icon. I'm just going to simply snip. Oh, hang on. Get my scissor tool, and I'm going to snip about here and here. And I'm just going to get my small selection tool. Select the other part of that. So we've, we've cut this little area out. Just double click to delete. Or oh, sorry, double click on your backspace to delete it. Do the same with the opposite side. Something that's roughly similar. She's quite a cleavage dress. Um, small section tool, click, hit backspace a few times. And we're also going to add some collarbones, which are essentially about here. And you see, because we're working on the model layer, it doesn't matter if I draw a point here, it'll only show uh, where the dress isn't being covered, which is really handy. So this is why the structure, um, or creating structure in your illustrations, makes life so much easier in the long run. So let's just create some simple lines here just to kind of insinuate or, um, you know, kind of give an idea or an impression that we have some muscle on our mannequin. Okay, great. Let's go down. We can also add maybe like a little, little flare there just to show the arm crease. Oh, it's up to you. You don't have to. Um, but essentially, that's it. That's pretty much our model mannequin with her dress. So, yeah, let's just lock down the model layer. Let's go to our body layer. And so now, if you want to, with your body layer, you can add different colors, whether it be a flat color. Um, you know, you can add green, whatever you want to do. It's completely up to you. But you can also add a print as well. Now, by a print, what I mean is, let's just create a very simplistic print. I'm just going to create a little square. I'm going to then, let's make it like, I don't know, pink. Let's then go for a, a circle, like this. Let's make it like a navy or something. I'm literally just making this up as I go along. I'm not saying it's going to be amazing. But let's just see. Uh, triangle. We probably can't create a triangle. So let's just create our own quickly. It's not a perfect triangle, but it'll work. And let's go for what? Let's go for a teal, maybe, <coughs> or a mustard bit of a mid-century kind of concept here. <coughs> and then let's just kind of like replicate this a little bit just by, you know, moving it around. I'm just adding and whatever. Uh, as I'm just doing this for sheer fun of it at the moment. It's not a print really. There we go. Let's just make that a little bit smaller. Object. Let's just group those items. There we go. We can make it a little bit smaller as well. And then let's just simply start to create more of these, okay? You see, I'm kind of like creating a print. There we go. I mean, you could even get an image online and kind of uh, chuck that in there, and it would still be, you know, you get a print online, perhaps. So I'm just going to show you how to create one. There we go. Lots of this. Group. Let's just maybe make that a little bit larger, perhaps. Let's just move that down as well. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing. We can do a whole print tutorial in another, in an, at another time. Just group that. In fact, what we do is let's, yeah, so on our body layer, I'm going to go Object, Arrange, Center Back. So once you have your print, you go Object, Arrange, and then Center Back. And then with your body layer, uh, we're going to simply select the body layer. So let's go to select the body layer. And also, holding down the Shift key, select the print layer. 
and then go right click and then make clipping mask boom there you go look at that beautiful we now have well it's intense but it's you get the point okay so uh, unfortunately my video cut out there but that's fine so Right, now so we've got our print in there, it's looking absolutely fantastic, loving it. There is one thing um, which we have to have a look at. So obviously the the model is actually, the, the garment is see-through, though we have a print in there, the, the garment is see-through because we can see the model. So essentially what we need to do is just go to our small selection tool, which is the white one, and then with the, all the other layers locked here, we're going to go to the body layer, and we're just going to click on the outline. And here you can see we have a fill. Now, if we add a fill to it, let's maybe make it sort of like a, let's maybe go for like almost like a cream colour. Maybe like a grey cream, and just click OK. And as you can see, we've now filled it, and the model is no longer there. And we can change this colour to be anything we want. Essentially, it's the background of your print. So let's just make it look lighter. Perfect. And another really fun thing, what I've started, kind of already done here, is you can actually change the trim colours as well. So, for example, if we lock the body layer, go to our details layer, click on that, we can go to the outline of our trim here, and we can go right well let's have it maybe let's actually remove it completely so let's cancel let's remove it completely and then our print will show through same with this side we can remove the fill and our print will show through otherwise we can maybe pick up a color so with this still selected uh, and this at the forefront we can simply go to our eyedropper tool and this will pick up the color of the background okay or we can even go for the red well, it's a bit bright or we can go for the orange for example so we can actually change the colors of the trims independently um, but yes, let's go for that nice sort of like cream colour again. There we go. Same with the opposite side. Oh, hang on. We've lost actually the line art for that for some reason. Hmm, okay, what's happened there? Let's just go back. Control Z just to go back, back, back. There we go. Okay. And we do the same with the opposite side. Let's just get that fill. And same with our other trims as well. It's really simple. We just simply click on the outline and we can change that color to be whatever we want. So we can start to actually create new designs. But that I'm really happy with. Okay, so that is essentially the end of our tutorial. Um, a little bit of an in-depth idea on how you can actually create Adobe, sorry, illustrations in Adobe Illustrator using your, uh, let's say, fashion illustrations or your sketches uh, to create these lovely let's say garments. And I've actually created a few of these. Let's have a look. Um, open. So where is it? Let's go. Uh, AI, AI, AI. Here we go. Let's open these up. And these are actually available to download on the blog page. Uh, click no. So this is our first one we've created. I've also done this one. So a similar print but different dress or illustration. And you can have a look at these illustrations in Season 1, Episode 3 of our blog. And look, you can see I've just changed the colours, etc. And uh, we have another one as well, which is this one, which is quite pretty too. So as I said, these are available to download on the actual blog page itself. So if you're on YouTube, head over to our website and take a look at those. They're free of charge. And they're fully editable as well. And they also have the layers. So you can have a look at actually what we've done here. Okay. So yeah, enjoy. There we go. That's a bit better. There we go. So you can actually see what's going on here. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you for, um, yeah next episode where we're going to start looking at print design uh, which should be really exciting really good fun if you have any questions please feel free to leave any comments uh, on the blog and we will uh, try and answer them thank you okay that's pretty much it from me this week i hope you enjoyed the tutorial um once again let's just mention uh, so next next uh Next episode, we're going to be focusing on actual print design. We're going to be using these beautiful lilies once they start to blossom and open up. And we're going to basically create some really beautiful fashion prints, which we can then basically print, digitally print on material for the next stage in our, uh, our project for Francesca's robe. So some really beautiful dark backgrounds, some beautiful colors in the lilies and stuff. So it should be really good fun. Um, also, don't forget, please subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook. We have a Twitter account, also Pinterest, and we also have a Reddit community. So yeah, show the love. Um, yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.